All right. Here it is. Blessed is he who is the name of clarity and goodwill. Mm -hmm. Shepherds the weak through the valley of darkness, for he is truly (laughs) his brother's keeper and the finder of lost children. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance, fury, and anger, etc., etc., etc. It's 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 Dope. All right, let's start this thing. All right. Michael, you So look- first of all, sir, I must ask, how are you? Michael, I am the best I ever have been and best I probably ever will be. How are you doing? I am good. I am I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm ready. And I'm waist deep in the water, ready waist- to start this journey. <laughs> waist deep in the water. Still trying to figure out what that really means. But- Still trying to get it all on grasp. You know? Yeah, man. Well, dude, you look great. Thank you. I've just tried. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been talking about doing this for a while, so it's 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 pretty exciting that we're finally getting around to doing it. And uh, I don't know, man. I'm excited to just talk about everything and nothing and bullshit, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be a very good American time. It's gonna be a time and a half. That's for sure. True. Except we won't get paid time and a half. Or we won't get paid at all for this. No, nope, we won't be paid time and a half for this. No. Nope. But hey, man. Uh, so tell me something exciting that's been going on lately. Or anything new? Anything cool happening? Oh, man. Um, I, uh, I pulled out every copy of Grand Theft Auto I own. Grand Theft Auto that I own on PS2. And I've started with number three, which is the first one for PlayStation 2. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to beat them all in order. Nice. Have uh, How long have you been playing it? Uh, probably a week. It's going to take probably the rest of my life to beat all of them. <laughs> um, I'm saying. You know, very long games. Very very worth it, though, you know? Doing it for the kids. For the kids, man. Like, I remember when I was playing Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, like, seriously, and trying to, like, play it all the way through. Um it took me, I want to say, like, a full year just to get past, like, one mission that I was stuck on. For It felt like forever, and I was... Was it the train mission? No, well, the train one took a long-ass time, but this one was actually kind of deeper in the game. This is, like, when you finally make it out to the desert, and you, like... Um, I think the mission was called, like, No, N-O-E or something. It was where you had to fly. You know how fucking difficult it is to fly in that game. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. the hardest fucking thing you'll ever have to do. And the game, the, the greatest thing about San Andreas is that it's the hardest game to play in the dark. Because, because like, it is the darkest game yeah. ever made. Like, everything about it, the whole picture is just so shitty. You know, like, the contrast is awful. It's it's as dark as possible. You could, you could play the game in the dark and turn all your set, like, uh, the brightness on your on your TV screen, like, fuck with all the settings, okay? And you still wouldn't be able to see what's going on. So... It's... The, 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 the shadows in the game are unreal. The casted uh, yeah. shadows are... Like, if you were to build a game that was, you know, in theory... Oh, to me, it's like it, it feels like I'm playing a game in the dark the way it is. So I think it's uh-huh. the, it's the uh, I don't know. I don't really know how to explain it. It's just it's it's terrible. But it's like the 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 worst best you know visuals uh-huh. in any game. I feel like we ever like grew up playing. But I remember great game. To, oh yeah, absolutely. It's a great game for sure. But I remember being stuck on that mission for I want to say like. Sad God, like maybe five months until I finally got past it somehow. But I remember coming home from school every day, just going right to the the PS2 trying to beat it, and I was always <laughs> crashing into a fucking tree, or I was flying too high above the radar, and I was getting you know caught, and I was always fucking failing. I broke maybe two controllers trying to fucking get past it, and I still couldn't do it. And then when I finally did it, I was like, man, I finally beat it, or I at least beat the mission. I'm like, what am I gonna do next? I'm like, oh, I can play the rest of the game now. <laughs> and the missions just get harder and harder and harder. Yeah, and that's the thing. It just like that that game is just so fucking difficult. Like, and I still never beat the game. I came close to like getting to the end, but man, I just I I I think I just gave up after a while. 
I mean, I gave up probably one eighth of how far you got into the game. You know, just the missions were just the the, the controls were what got me the most of out of everything. Mm-hmm. It was just unreal sometimes how how much they wanted you to do with just so little they provided you. Exactly. I mean, the more like I looked back at it, like you're right, the controls of that game were just so fucking like. They were they, they weren't enough, and the fact <laughs> is, you can get past all those missions somehow, with like so much like lack of help, you know, from your controls. I don't know, like, yeah, wrong side of the tracks, man. That was that was the one of my least favorite fucking missions I ever had to do. I mean, all you had to do was get on the damn train, <laughs> and I never fucking understood how difficult that would be until I spent a few months on that one. And oh yeah. It made me not want to finish the game or play the game at all. But eventually we pressed forward. Yeah, man. Yeah, dude, like, I don't know. I want to eventually get back to playing that game. Maybe when I am have a lot of downtime and, and take the time to actually play it again, that'd be mm-hmm. kind of fun. And I, enjoy I enjoyed it. it. I enjoyed it. It was a great game in theory, but fuck, is, that is just the hardest game I've ever played. Way harder than Miss Pac-Man. <laughs> Harder than the third grade. That's true. No. And nothing's harder than that. So, we got some, uh, let's start with some fucking, uh, headlines. Apparently there's a new Florida man story. I can read it right now. Let me see. Oh, that I've got it pulled up uh, right here, I think. Oh, yeah. Read up what you got. The, uh, um, so, one day ago, published, Florida man known for Viral Easter Bunny bra arrested after hit and run tells cops to Google him. <laughs> to, I guess I'm I'm assuming that it's gonna they're gonna get him off on that because you know famous people right. can do anything. <clears throat> um, I'm seeing I haven't seen the actual footage of the bra myself. I'm seeing this man's mugshot, and um, I can't tell you from his mugshot if I if I think he did it or not, but I mean the bra <laughs> looks very awesome. Was it better than that Kansas and Kansas City State game or Kansas State game? That bra was that was that's what we need more of. That's the thing. That's the thing that sports needs more of. It's just more bras because you know when bras happen, the announcers go, "Oh, it's such a sad day, such a shame that this is happening." <laughs> oh, but Fuck no, that, I dude. think that's absolute. Bull, because to me, there's nothing better than a good old fashioned bra on field or on court at mm. times to get the adrenaline pumping. No, I couldn't agree with you more. I almost feel like it's a, uh, it kind of, uh, it's like you pay to come see the game, cool. But to me, it's something extra. It's like that. That's that, that to me. Seeing a bra is like getting your money's worth on a ticket. That oh you yeah, see, you know, nothing beats the Ron Artest bra though. It's funny, I was just about to mention, I remember watching that game when I was a kid, it was in like, uh, I think it was like 02 or 03 or something, I forgot, but like, I think the Bucks were playing that same night, but I got, um, I was watching like FSN Wisconsin or something, and uh, they flipped right to that game to like, show what was happening. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, man, this is unreal, and then I see like Ron Artest jump into the, the stands, and he's like beating like these guys up. Winging it freaking... <laughs> Now that that was the best one of all time in my opinion. <laughs> that was unmatched and unfortunately I don't think we're going to see another bra quite like that anytime soon. Yeah. Um, now now without it offending somebody or, you know. Not without it offending someone or the um, NBA like trying to make money off of it somehow, true. like hosting some sort of like pay pay to see bra. Mm-hmm. Cuz the NBA is just the most money hungry league in the in professional sports. It's true, man. But it also makes me realize how underrated hockey is, you know. But here in America, yeah, yeah. it's not, you know, you like how often do you ever fucking hear about hockey on like ESPN? any NHL thing? Even though we have how many teams? Thirty, thirty-two. Yeah, it, I mean the league is huge. And what's the percentage? Probably ninety percent of them are all in America, but we never talk about any of them at all. True. I mean, you never hear it on ESPN. The only time you ever hear about ESPN is that. You know, I want to say like the um, Stanley Cup. The, the semifinals are happening, and like you hear, uh, Game Six, uh, the fucking Bruins beat the Flyers or some shit. But you didn't hear anything until like the 
final game before the finals ever happen or something. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you can only hear about the Stanley Cup finals, like, when it ends. No one ever gives a fuck about, like, you know, hearing about who's playing. It's just a shame because I used to like hockey at one time. I think you and I both really, you know, took a liking to hockey back when we were in, like, what, high school or or middle school, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, going to minor league hockey games, you know, I mean... I mean, being that made me want always... to watch NHL hockey more, but like we don't, we don't yeah, have the, the they, resources. Like America no. doesn't want you to watch hockey because it's not on ESPN ever. It's never on any major broadcast, honestly. Like unless it's the um, Winter Classic or the Stanley Cup. I remember this year I I couldn't watch the Stanley Cup because they blacked it out in my area. <laughs> oh, really? They blacked out the Stanley freaking Cup to where we couldn't watch it. Well, it's not like it's an important game, Michael, you know? Oh, yeah, no. I mean, they wouldn't do it for the Super Bowl or something. No, dude, fuck the Super Bowl, dude. I think everyone, you know, got over the Super Bowl after Tom Brady won his 12th Super Bowl this last year or the year before Super Bowl and the Grammys are just the most rigged things in the history of America. You're right, man. It's when Tom Brady keeps winning Super Bowls and DJ Khaled wins awards for things that he didn't do. Didn't yeah. absolutely have a hand in at all. Don't even get me fucking started on that fucking guy. <laughs> but yeah, let's let's start that one. <laughs> yeah, dude. We can we'll come back to him for like one of our topics. But speaking of Florida man, I was um, I remember this thing a while back where people were looking up um, Florida man articles on um, on certain dates and um, people day were of like, your birth. I yeah, think your it birth. Was. So I actually looked up yours to see what I could find, and uh, I found a, I found a few interesting ones. So uh, this one says, "Let's um, go." So November fourteenth, your birthday. Um, this one says from the police: man dresses as a woman, buys puppy with stolen credit card. And you guessed it; it's it, it took place in Florida. It doesn't say where. It sounds like a pretty Pensacola thing, if you ask me. Yeah, it does. Oh, it was in Largo, but yeah. He said, "Uh, Florida man." Disguise himself as a woman and privately purchase a puppy from a pet store. So, I so was at, he using a card of a woman that he that he stole? I'm assuming. Yeah, or? Per, yeah, that's what it's saying. And they show pictures of the woman and the man. And um, I don't want to say they look too different, but I can see how he could have potentially pulled it off. Oh well, I just realized they both have the same neck tattoo. Really? What is yeah, it? So uh, that, an that eagle? Sold it. Yeah, no, it's like a music note, which. Kind of cheesy, but I don't Left know. Left note. It, yeah, it's a, yeah. I don't know if that's a real tattoo or not, but I can see how he might have gotten away with this because there's a there's a he, he went that far to get a tattoo. Either they have matching tattoos or this guy's just brilliant. Maybe it was it. his sister. I don't know. It it. Let's see. Yeah, he used a stolen credit card and a stolen driver's license to buy a. Uh, Fawn colored French bulldog valued at several thousand dollars from a store in Largo. Um, yeah. Apparently, there's no relation. It's just this guy literally went ahead and tried to be somebody else. It's crazy. <laughs> well, he was really creative about it, man. He even got like the coked neck tattoo out and everything. trying to buy a damn uh, puppy with a stolen credit card. Man, he, I think he really pulled it off. It was pretty good. Too bad he got caught. But um, I know he just wanted the damn dog. Here's another one on your birthday. Florida man had mother of Satan bomb materials. I've actually heard of that one. <laughs> I've actually heard of them. Continue to read a little bit about that one. That one. <laughs> a Florida man is accused of having an explosive chemical that is the terrorist group Al Qaeda has dubbed <laughs> has dubbed the mother of Satan in his Central Florida home. The Daytona Beach News Journal said that. L- Reports Lake Helen police acted on a tip Tuesday when they went into the home of a 37-year-old Jared Coburn and found a... Oh, okay. Yeah, they found... They <laughs> came across his place and saw that he was making his own bombs or something. Uh, he said he told the cops that he was making his own version of fireworks, but they didn't believe that. That's, all, I always, that's the one I always use, too. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Because, you know, when you you want to make bombs and you don't want to get caught, you just tell them you're making fireworks or, you know. Same thing with meth or... Um, yeah, dude. Any other um, valuable. Oh, apparently that's a that's a pretty big headline, dude. It's, it's, there's this one I keep seeing that keeps... Uh, it's all over Google, except for the other one, other than the person stealing their identity. But, 
Uh, yeah, man. So I looked up mine. This one, uh, oh, this is a good one. This one says on my birthday, October 18th. Florida man shot outside bar after rejecting shot inside bar. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know how that happened. Oh, my God. <clears throat> Charged with second degree murder. Wow. It must have been after a Florida State game. It says, um, they got into an argument inside the establishment on October 9th after Meeks refused to drink a shot of liquor offered him offered to him by Yi. The guy's name was Yi. That's great. Yi? Yeah, Yi. Why Yi? Yi? So Kanye was yeah. down there. I was going to say, that's <laughs> doesn't know what Kanye goes by now? Uh, about six of those rounds were shot in the direction of the bar. The man's so like, shots all around, is yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, dude. Well, everyone shots on him. This is a, this is pretty misleading. Everyone probably thinks that oh, dude, shots all around. Meanwhile, they're actually bullets. Good times, man. Wow. Well, how about that? Some really exciting things happen in Florida on everyone's birthday. Everyone's birthday. Every day is a notable day for a Florida man and a Florida not a. Well, how come Florida woman isn't a thing? Google Florida woman and just type in any random date and see if see if. It, the same, or you get the same results. I've never heard of anybody really doing that. So I found one. Let's see. Um, so I'm just looking on my birthday. <laughs> Here's. Uh, okay, so this one's on my birthday. Florida woman, the golf cart gale. <laughs> <laughs> Formerly known as the golf cart gale, the Florida woman. She looks like a gale. Calls the police on black father enjoying his son's soccer game. What? <laughs> this court says this man was simply trying to watch his son's soccer game and cheer for him from the sides. He yelled, the ref is right, when he saw the kid out there getting frustrated after a call. Man, so, uh, this is pretty, I can't believe this even made a fucking news article. I guess I guess it was a slow day in Orlando. There's actual pictures of the scene. There's a woman sitting on a golf cart, which is Gail. I'm guessing. How does Gail approximately look? I don't know if there's a, she. She looks like she's maybe in her late forties, early fifties. So not quite boomer age yet. Yeah. Well, well not well, yet. I mean, boomers yeah, she's, are one, she's there. only one. She, she looks like someone who'd have something to fucking complain about over nothing. About like every other all, person at there. all times throughout the entire fucking day. And there's a there's a picture of the man explaining, I guess, whatever's going on to the sheriff that a woman was giving him a hard time. Um, yeah, I guess he was saying he was being harassed by her. Which I mean, the lady's on her phone, uh, sitting on a fucking golf cart. Clearly, looks like she has nothing better to do than harass somebody. Well, that's great. Shame that's on great. you, golf cart Shame Gale, golf for cart what you Gale. did to this man and to the children who had to see this. Can you imagine how afraid his child must have been seeing this happening? Did you know, America? You know, America. Wow, okay, this, wow, is kind of... okay, this is kind of... Well, that's good that happened, I don't know. <laughs> what is this, like the Huffington Post or something? No, it was the uh, Orlando Weekly. Ah, I'm going to look up yours see if anything comes out of it. Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, yeah, here we go. Okay. So this one says, this is on your birthday, Florida woman brings meth to doctor's office to have it tested amidst to using it for a month. To have it tested, what, to see if it's like, if it's laced or anything with any other kind of drug or? I have no idea. That's, I mean... I think you'd have to be pretty methed out to want to bring it into somewhere for someone else to test it to see if it's good meth. <laughs> That's just my guess. I wonder if they called the cops on her. Because I know at some doctor's office, if you're doing drugs, they don't call the cops because it's like, we're not we're not a police station, so we're not going to call, we're not worried about it. I think it's different if you like... <laughs> If you overdose or something and you're dealing with that, then I think they're supposed to keep it confidential. But, like, if yeah. you're alive and sober yeah, and, like, sober. just being like, hey, can you test my meth for me, please? Like, I'm, then I'm sure it's a big fucking deal. Oh, here's another one on your birthday. It says, Florida woman steals live lobster from Red Lobster. No way. Yeah, man. I was in uh, St. Petersburg. Did she it at the beach so I can be back with its friends? Uh, well, let's read about it. Um... Well, apparently she was drunk, uh, so that explains it, but 
You can help Speaking you get of drunk, attention. I need to get to an Applebee's as soon as possible. <laughs> Call up Brent, man. I'm sure he'd join you anytime. <laughs> like, that sounds great. I mean, don't you... Aren't there just some days where you're just like, man, yeah, there's nothing I want to fucking do right now other than go to a fucking Applebee's and just get absolutely fucking trashed. Just absolutely shit face. Just... I mean, puking in the Applebee's bathroom. Puking on the carpet in the Applebee's. Just making an absolute scene of yourself mm-hmm. so that you can eventually be that Florida man. Essentially. In a way, it's just kind of blending in with the locals. Yeah, man, there's some days where I'm at work and I'm just like, fuck, I, I'd rather be at an Applebee's just getting absolutely wasted with my friends. Oh, yeah. You know? Even if I I throw up a few times, I'm sure it'd be worth it. Let's see, latest. My favorite is the uh, guy walking into the bar, refusing to get take a shot, and he gets shot for it. Well, damn. Damn. It's crazy what people will, will, you know, do. You seem to have a Florida Man Festival, right? It's like an actual, like, music festival. A Florida Man Music Festival? It's called Florida Man Fest, yeah. I think Diplo headlined it. You're shitting me. I'm, I think... I, it is? There is a... Wow, that is crazy. There's a radio station called Florida Man, FM 101.9. Central Florida's biggest alternative music. Wow, dude, let's see who's all played there. 311? Holy shit. That seems like a fucking festival 311 would headline. (laughs) (laughs) Is Diplo there? I don't see Diplo. Damn. Maybe he's doing the next one or something. Oh, there's that one band that always played in fucking Pensacola, The Revivalist. Wow. The Revivalists were there? (laughs) And so was Jimmy Eat World. How do they get Jimmy Eat World to play at this fucking thing? (laughs) I don't see uh, Diplo, but... God damn, wouldn't that be something to see Diplo at Florida Man Fest? Oh, yeah. I wonder if there's one coming up this year. I think that was from last year. Man. Let's talk about DJ Khaled, Michael. Oh, God. I know how, I know how much you love him. This can, be entered, this can be entered at any point, and I'm just going to go ahead and let you know I got a lot of problems with this man. <laughs> and... I, I mean, I could start at any point. I mean, let's let's just, let's just start at. First of all, he's not even a DJ. Mm-hmm. This man does not know how to DJ, and he's openly admitted it. And <laughs> he has absolutely zero musical talent. He does not produce, write, um, f- feature if you would like to say, on any of his songs. It is literally, he's a, he is a guy that he claims orchestrates everything. Like he gets everybody in the same room and gets them on a, on a beat that someone else makes and just makes the hit happen. So in other words, he's a guy that has a bunch of rich friends that he gets rich off of. Pretty much. I, I mean, that's, that's how I kind of make sense of it. Like, you made a point how he, cause like I recently heard this one little like song I guess he quote made, but he stole the the beat from like Miss Jackson by Outkast or some shit. Yeah, yeah. It's like I know other people do that. They sample like other people's songs and shit, but I don't know. I think it's still kind of a weird subject taking something like that and making it your own. Oh yeah. I don't know, but. Yeah, uh, from my understanding, I don't really know what he does. I think um he likes to go on Instagram and show what he thinks he is. You know, Working out with DJ Khaled? Yeah. And like hanging out with Justin Bieber and Diddy and Jay-Z and shit. And I'm like, all those people have actually like done something. It's like the too. It's like Big Sean and like other weird people that you don't actually listen to, but you know who they are. Right. Right. Like Justin Bieber, prime example. 
Um, my least favorite is when he did that terrible song with the very overrated Beyonce. Um, <laughs> she, that was just atrocious. And it, it was, it was like the lyrics were like, I like my Lambo. I like my fast Lambo. I like my fast cash in my Lambo. It's going fast <laughs> like a Lambo. Fast like a cash Lambo. And I'm like, wow. The, the, the amount of time put into these lyrics. Do you ever think like, oh man, I could have wrote something like that? I absolutely could have. I just wrote, I just freestyled to a DJ Khaled song. Well, his his biggest role. Hey, turn your volume down a little bit. I'm getting an echo. Um, his biggest role I've noticed is just saying like, all I ever hear is DJ Khaled throughout these songs. I'm like, is this his way of saying like, I am a part of the song or I have all this credibility? So let me say my name like eight different times to make it clear that I have done something. I don't know. It makes him feel as if though he has contributed whenever he has not. Pretty much. I don't know, but then he's, I think he just won like two Grammys or something. I don't know. He worked with like what, Nipsey Hustle or something, which I understand. Anything Nipsey is good, but like. He's apparently worked with everybody, but it's funny because you'll see artists that don't want to do anything with him. For example, like J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, um. You have this handful of artists that I feel like whenever you're on a DJ Khaled song is as if you, it doesn't take any, if you've ever heard any DJ Khaled song, you realize it's always like six different people on one song. Right. And, um, the, I think the reason why they all do it is because it's like a clout thing. It's like, Oh, we're all just going to do this big DJ Khaled song. But if you, you have a handful of artists like J Cole and Kendrick Lamar and other people like that, that, never have done anything with him and I think it's because they realize just how corny the entire thing is right his whole persona and everything he's I don't know if he even really stands for anything other than just being him, himself which is not the wrong being yourself you know but unless yourself is leeching off of all of your famous friends and just building this massive ego massive from it ego. yeah I don't understand how someone has two albums that they literally did not write um, write produce or sing or rap on I don't know man but he's he's winning a bunch of Grammys from it maybe we should uh, maybe we should stop everything we're doing and try to do the same thing and hopefully get some sort of luck like he's getting this is so yep. easy apparently yep. I guess that's if, if that's what's working in America because of DJ Khaled there's a few million aspiring SoundCloud rappers that are trying to make it right now we're they're next. just using their friends. They're just using their friends that are the rappers to help them. They're just, they're just yelling their name. TJ Khaled, what a guy! What Young a fucking guy! <laughs> on the beat, <coughs> we the best music. What a guy! That I found on the Huffington Post: Giant condom hands out free rubbers in Mexico City. Sorry, is this and like a, a man dressed as a condom? And he has on one of those superhero, like, it's like the blindfold but with the eyes cut out of it. <laughs> and, I mean, it's a 49 second video. I'm about to watch it. Yeah, let me know how but, it is. But, um, uh, here we go. Let's see. Just mute it. It looks like there's a lot going on. Like, he might be in a subway or some sort of public transit. Is the costume pretty legit? Does he look like a giant condom? He looks like. Just a giant hot dog, honestly. <laughs> He's in a bus. The bus looks like it's going, I'm assuming it's a bus. It's like, there's like an ungodly amount of people on this bus. Nope, it's a subway because I can tell he's in the subway now. Wow. He is handing out condoms, but the condoms aren't packaged. Like, you know how condoms are rolled up? Yeah. You know? No. Oh, no, no, no. It's a big strip. I thought it was like condoms already elongated <laughs> in a package that... Were you know, and now they're handing out plush condom toys. He looks like a hot dog. He looks like a ketchup bottle, because it yeah. has the thing on the top. You know. Yeah, I know what you mean. That's funny. And he's in the subway, and I mean, there are just so many people in the subway. Holy shit! 
Is there people complaining about it or are they saying it's a good thing? No, no, no. Thing? Everyone's having a really good time. There's some there's some older men that look like they're a little freaked out about it. <laughs> Maybe they were the ones most curious and wanted a condom. That's crazy. Here's another article. How to empty your bowels every morning. Top surgeon explains how. All right, explain it to me. This is something I need to hear because I'm sure it's, it's going to come in handy at some point. Anyway. It's just you eat a bunch of Taco Bell before you go to bed. Dude, talk about a fucking religious cleansing. All you need is, you need is just three shredded chicken burritos and a medium Mountain Dew and you're set. So the photo is a, some, a bunch of boiled eggs. Let's see. <laughs> Certain fruits and vegetables and whole grains sustain good health. However, Dr. Stephen Gundry, Gundry, I don't know. Um, there's this harmful condition known as leaky gut. <laughs> and it's affecting millions of people nationwide. <laughs> leaky gut. Warning signs include weight gain. Mm. Oh, I can tell you a lot of people already that have that. Yeah, man. Fatigue. That's me every day. Digestive discomfort. I feel that. It says stiff, achy joints, and even skin problems. This just sounds like an overall, like... It sounds like a fully functioning just, human being. <laughs> it sounds like you're fully functioning f- fat hipster <laughs> in 2020. <laughs> it's true, man. That it's... has leaky gut. Now, is leaky gut, like, is it your gut leaking out? Is it's it just another name for, like, you know, watery diarrhea. Leakage of the anus <laughs> in the britches. In the flesh. In the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> leakage of the anus in the flesh. Shit. This reminds me, you ever, like, look up, like, you're feeling like shit one day, and you want to look up your symptoms on Google, it's like... You and have everything this, 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 this? terminal cancer. Yeah, you have, you know, cancer of the anus or some shit, or you're going to die in four hours from now if you don't go to the you must store. have the anus amputated immediately. Exactly. Like, there was one time I was like, I, I thought I had the flu or something. Turns out it was something else. And what I read is it told me that I was pregnant. Really? Which I wanted to believe, but I just, I just couldn't, man. Can I... Side note, can I put these headphones on and it's still the audio still work? Let's see. Yeah, you can do it. Yeah, and there's a slight well, echo. So I'm sure yeah, it's I'm starting to phone. notice it more now. That's all good. Hold on one second. I was going to do the same yeah. and get like a massive I got to feed the pigs. <laughs> feed the pigs, man. <laughs> I like the uh, Buzz Lightyear behind you, by the way. All right, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you so nice and clear. I think, I think the echo is gone. I think we, we, we solved the problem. Oh, the kids at the orphanage aren't going to believe this one. No way, man. Man, episode two is going to make such a difference now. <laughs> <laughs> episode two, Star Trek. Yep. We're just going to, we're going to, are we going to be moving, moving backwards in episodes like Star Wars? How Star Wars apparently starts backwards and... The last episode's like the first episode, apparently. Yeah, I don't understand the logic behind that, but I mean, if, if that's how you want to tell a story, it's almost like something Quentin Tarantino would do. I don't know, man. It feels like we always move backwards every day, so... Oh, uh, yeah. It sounds like a Tame Impala album. <clears throat> yeah, I mean... I don't know. Speaking of Tame Impala, are you excited for their new record? That's I don't even know when it's coming out, but... Um, I think it's coming out this up and coming month. I want to say it's like the 17th or so, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I'm excited to listen to it for sure. Um, I mean, I'm always excited to give it a first try. It's something I feel like I'm going to have to listen to probably about three times before I can actually make an accurate judgment on it. Right. And not usual. I feel like it's going to have a whole lot of songs on it. I feel like it's going to have like, damn near 20 songs on this album just because he Kevin Parker released what like four singles at least four of them which is a lot it's a lot of singles um I've always been a fan of artists just releasing like one and that be your teaser for the entire album you know Mm -hmm, right but you know he does things differently and I feel like he's gonna do something differently here I feel like it's gonna be a little bit more electronic than anything previously. What did you make of all the uh, singles you released? Though? I didn't go through all of them. Let's, let's pull them up. I can tell you off the top of my head which ones I have listened to. 
Um, Do you feel it just sounds like a different Tame Impala, though? Because me and Andrew have been talking a lot about this, and, like, I don't know. I'm so into, like, the early Tame Impala still, where, like, it was just more psych and, you know, more progressive, like, psych music, which I love. I love, like, early Tame Impala and stuff like that. But yeah, inner, yeah. inner speaker will always be, like, the shit to me. And so was, like, Lonerism, too. I mean, th- those are, like, like the two major ones that really got me, like, super into Tame Impala. And then Currents <clears> came, <throat> and Currents is special because we saw him on that, you know, later in Yeah, we tour. saw him on that phase. Yeah, and that was really special. Like, being able to that experience one... that with you was, was really special. And, like, it's, like, I'm still high off of those memories from when we saw Tame Impala, you know? Before, yeah, yeah. Like, all the new shit, because they didn't play any new songs or anything like that. It was just straight, like, you know... Lonerism and Currents for the most part and that was really good because those are like all really respectable albums but with this new stuff I was just kind of thrown through a loop like you know whenever you hear like a band you like making new music and it's you know all these new singles are coming out I just for some reason it's just me personally but I couldn't get into the singles very quickly at all I mean there was a lot of hype going on like one day they fucking played Saturday Night Live or something and I hear the song and I'm yeah, still yeah. Like, not too credibly faced by it, but I don't know. I'm hoping when their record actually comes out, it'll be, you know, like the, the B tracks or something will be a little better than whatever the singles are. I'm, I'm hoping there's more to it than what I've heard. What I'm trying to say. I'm sure there's going to be, just like I said, there's four singles. I'm looking at them right now. There's, right. um, there's five actually. There's, um, patience, borderline. Um, it might be time. Um, Lost in Yesterday and Post Humanist Forgiveness. Mm-hmm. And um, I haven't listened to all of them. I've listened to Lost in Yesterday, I've listened to Borderline, and I've listened to Patience. The only one I really liked was Borderline. Um, the rest of them was just kind of, I felt Borderline on. Um, <laughs> no, no I mean, it's going to be definitely an experience. The thing is, he's progressed so much, and I think it, he he he's gained such an enormous following since Currents, and it's weird because a lot of his following didn't happen until, and I think you could agree, the past two years. Yeah, for sure. And the album is, what, four years old? Five years old? His last album, Currents. Yeah, around there. Um... Let's see, I have it right here on hand. Let's like just check. 15, wasn't it? 15, so five years ago. Um, and it's weird that people did, people really got into Tame Impala so recently whenever the this music had already been out for so long. Right, that's what you I'm know? saying. Like, I know that Currents was more of like a... I feel like it was more of like a mainstream phase for Tame Impala because you, you'd hear fucking... Um, uh, what are some of the songs from that record? Um, fucking... Uh, less I know the better yeah that that one like I remember hearing that everywhere that's one, one that point. played everywhere yeah here I actually have the record in front of me um, but yeah like songs like those songs were like just so fucking like you, they were I don't want to say they were mainstream but you did hear them everywhere and like the only time you ever heard Tame Impala was like Elephant on like the fucking Ford commercials you know yeah but that yeah. was about it that's like when they like kind of I don't want to say sold themselves but like when their music started getting out there, like, publicly instead of, like, it, them being kind of a more, like, you know, uprising underground kind of deal. But And it's recently taken off even more. I feel like when that album came out, it was more mainstream, but it hadn't hit mainstream yet. Right. I think it was something that eventually just people, people found it. The, this generation loves finding stuff that they think is unique. Which, I mean, everything really is unique in itself. Yeah. But this generation loves having something that they think is unique. And though Tame Impala, I don't feel like, has completely hit... When Tame Impala is doing songs with Katy Perry and DJ Khaled, that's when I have just, like, completely lost all hope. That's where it doesn't become music to me anymore. Yeah, that's where it becomes more of entertainment than music. I think um, a lot of people who listen to mainstream... Uh, artists or in this case producers like quote unquote producers like DJ Khaled like yeah like I feel like mainstream music is more for people who don't actually listen to music 
it's a lot of I've come to the conclusion a lot of people that like mainstream music don't like the actual music aspect of it. They like it as an entertainment thing, and they like it to where they're hanging out with their friends and they want to put on something that sounds cool. Which is it's, completely fine, you know. Everyone's got yeah, their different yeah. Taste everyone and shit, has that like, music. You know, a lot of these like uh, people who make all these songs, like you know, there's only very few mainstream musicians who are actually like gifted, you know, talentedly, you know, with actual yeah. instruments and shit and like anyone can make a fucking beat on you know a laptop or something and look at look at that all the, like these DJs and shit like you know Skrillex was always really good at making his computer sound like it's going through an aneurysm and people like that you know and uh-huh. it, it sold so many fucking minds and made lots of fans and I don't know like to me I think music is more meaningful through like you know actually taking the time to learn an instrument and, you know, getting really good with it. And there's a lot of people who mm-hmm. aren't good at their instruments and still fucking, you know, are really successful at making, you know, Make music. Too. Yeah, you know, and, you know, I hear shit sometimes where I'm like, oh, I could have fucking, you know, made this myself wearing a blindfold and wearing earplugs and just hoping for the best, <laughs> you know, that's what I feel like some bands, you know, there's either like really good bands and there's really <laughs> shitty, you know, people who just make really shitty music, but... You know, there's always going to be a, a fucking somebody drawn to it, you know, which is good. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. yeah, with like just, you know, stuff you hear like on the radio and mainstream shit, you know, it's just, it's just like, it's all so very unappealing. And I mean, Andrew feel the same way, but Andrew's really funny about it. He's like, you know, he fucking hates, you know, mainstream music, but yet he knows all the lyrics to all the songs because you hear them everywhere. You can't ever get yeah, away from it. Yeah, you know? there's no escaping it. Which is the worst part. Like, you're not super into something, but yet you still fucking know everything about the song, every lyric, every, what it's about, who fucking wrote it or whatever. And yeah, it's... I don't know. It's, it, it gets me because, like, um, these people that get these mainstream songs, they're constantly played in public places on the radio or at sporting events or places like that, in places where you didn't want to hear that song, right. but you, now you're being forced to, that still counts as a play for them that counts to get for their numbers, that count for how many streams they had, how much airtime they had. And that's how these people that are really terrible end up winning these awards like the Grammys and all of this and like, oh, he went platinum, like like Drake, for example. Nobody actually listens, sit down and wants to listen to Drake. It's <laughs> his music is pushed so hard by on radio stations and on Spotify. And there are a bunch of like teenage girls that want to listen to him. Right. But And there's a lot he, of people it, in general who are into it, but I, I know what you what you're what yeah, you're saying. But most of his streams, I mean, it's like, oh, this terrible record you've never heard of and you couldn't name three songs off of went completely double platinum. Yeah. And it shouldn't have. It's only because it got a bunch of streams. Yeah, all thanks to Spotify, you know. All they, thanks to Spotify, because Spotify throws that throws it in your feed and right. makes you makes you listen to it. There's a lot of, I mean, if you don't have Spotify premium, Spotify makes you listen to songs you don't want to, which count for those artists, which people like Drake, for example, pump a bunch of money into Spotify so that they put it in those playlists so that he gets more plays so that he goes platinum and becomes this icon. What What a fucking like way to do it. Honestly, it's crazy. It's almost just like, you know, it kind of, it makes sense because that's how I feel a lot about like all the music that DJ Khaled produces or whatever. Because like uh-huh. you know, I'm just like watching fucking you know YouTube videos you know or something, and uh, one of his ads come up for his new record that I don't fucking care about. You know, it's just uh-huh. crazy how people are like willing to put and spend so much money trying to put their shit out there, which I understand. You know, like you gotta yeah, yeah. But like it's everywhere. It's fucking everywhere. And, like, kind of how you're saying with Spotify, like, how you have to, like, sometimes songs will come up that are, like, popular that are, like, nothing you want to fucking listen to. Mm -hmm. And yet you're like, oh, okay, well, this dude put out another fucking, you know, song, and I still don't want to listen to it, but here I am listening to it. It's crazy. That's how I feel about everything, though. I don't know, but it's just funny how it is. Yeah. Music is a funny business. Speaking of annoying music... I was just thinking about this before. I was trying to watch a, a, a basketball game. I was actually watching, uh, I think it was like a Bucks game. Um, mm-hmm. I was just streaming on my phone at work because I was just trying to pass time. But I was reminded, like, man, still at like, all major sporting events, there's always still those annoying fucking like hype songs that 
people still play at, you know, football games or something like that, like, fucking... Uh-huh. So I was just thinking, I was, like, coming up with a list in my head of, like, songs I hated the most. I was wondering, like, what's your least favorite song that you hear at, like, whenever you go to, like, Pelicans games or any kind of sporting <laughs> event? Um, absolutely. I was actually funny. I was thinking about the same thing the other day. I think I heard this song and I was like, God, why is that still ever played? And it's, it's that song, Turn Down For What? Oh, fuck, man. And, <laughs> I hate that song so much. And that <coughs> song got so much play time. So many plays. Yeah. Let's get, uh, let me get on Spotify and look that up right now and see how many plays it got. And every single play, none of them were consensual plays. Right. None of them, (laughs) none of the times that people, this music was forced on these people, did they actually want to hear this song? None of it was consensual. It's true. And, I remember back in high school when that came out, how big of a fucking deal was. You heard it everywhere. I was just like, God, when will when will I ever be able to get away from this fucking terrible song? I don't even think it was catchy. It was just fucking in annoying. Two thousand and thirteen. Seems right. I'm like high school for that us. That is a long time ago. That was like seven years ago already. Three hundred and fifty-seven million plays, and that is just on Spotify. Damn. That makes sense, man. But. Can you just, like, imagine yourself, like, driving your car, going somewhere, listening to music, and that would be one of the songs you just want to go, oh, I, want to really, I really want to hear this song. You get I really in, want to turn down for what right now? You really, you get in the Uber, and that's what's playing. Yeah, and I just want them to turn it down for all the reasons I don't want to listen to it. <laughs> turn down for what, yo? Yeah, dude, I don't know. I fucking hate that song. I think one song I really can't stand either that I just get so annoyed by, like... I don't know that it may it might be like really appealing to like little kids because when I was a kid I was like oh man this song's pretty fucking cool but that's when I was little was fucking yeah, yeah. uh it's like a it's like a it's a total stadium song now but like crazy train. zombie nation that like. too but crazy train by Ozzy and I'm just like God I fucking every time I hear the song I'm like God not this fucking song again I fucking cannot stand hearing this. <laughs> The same <laughs> shitty fucking verse over and over again. Stadium like, anthems are the fucking worst. Like, they really yeah. are. It's every professional sporting event, and it's the same damn thing every time. It's turned every down time. for what? Party rock anthem. Um, I fucking cannot stand the fucking party rock. That was another song that got, I- like, overexposed and commercialized so fucking quickly. I remember, like, that came out when we were in high school, too. And you just fucking heard everywhere, like on fucking car commercials, and you got these fucking hamsters dancing to it and shit. I'm just like, God, this is just the worst fucking thing to ever fucking, you know, be seen or heard in this uh, fucking world. Mm-hmm. And it was everywhere. You cannot get away from it. And then kids no in school were fucking it. singing it. There's like, absolutely no escaping it. It I, was just... I remember with some dude I went to high school with, uh, I fucking knew of him. I wasn't a friend, but like his ringtone was that song. Like every time he got a text message, that song would play. I was like, God, if I heard that every fucking day, I'd lose my fucking mind. Oh, yeah. It sounds like some Christian Williams shit, honestly. Yeah, Christian Williams is a very trendy bastard, but we, that's why we <laughs> love him. I remember when, uh, oh, man, dude. Cybertruck. Uh, Christian loves the Cybertruck. I asked him about it. I said, so, Christian, what, what, what do you find appealing about the Cybertruck? He's like, it just looks cool. I'm like, yeah, if you like, you know, your car to look like the it's from Minecraft or something. The attracted to the Cybertruck. <laughs> I haven't talked to him too greatly, but I asked him briefly. I was like, um, I remember when I was on Twitter a while ago, he like retweeted the picture of the cyber truck. He's like, man, this looks I've sick. And then, this. And, then, and then I tweeted, I was like, this looks like something you would find really appealing. <laughs> 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 that boy. Christian was always uh, the first dude like I knew to have like the first whatever that came out. Like he was whatever really, was hot at he, the time. Yeah, like he was like super into like um julian or vaping or whatever and then like one day i come to work he's got this little like circle thing and it's like it's a vape or some shit i was like christian what is that it's an apple tv remote yeah, yeah, exactly i was like what is this like hey, it's it's called the soren i'm like what the fuck There's is the soren he did the corner of it, it yeah like yeah and, and, it, it, and he smoked the corner of it and it was like like the the flavor was like the fruitiest fucking thing i've ever ever tasted in my life and i was like grapes asshole is what you're smoking <laughs> today like, grapes asshole essentially dude. <laughs> i was like let me try that thing christian i'm gonna see what this thing's about and i said is it gonna make me sore throughout the sky or something will i be sore after this 
or am I going to be really sore after smoking this? And then I tried, I was like, man, but like, he always has been the first person to have like, uh, that I don't like, you know how you find out about something later, but you find out about uh, like online or something and you see like yeah. someone using it. But he was always yeah. the first, like for me to come across anything. It was always Christian. And then the rest of the world, I would notice. I'm like, oh, so, you know, look at the trend that Christian started. I think Christian's the reason for everything. He's a trendy bastard. He, I remember <laughs> when, <laughs> so so Kobe passed away the other day, RIP, RIP. You know? not the other day, it was a couple of days ago. Yeah. It feels like it was this morning still because of how bad it is. I still can't but, believe um, it. But Christian, um, I got on Twitter <laughs> Everybody was paying respects to Kobe, you know, everybody uh-huh. in the feed was paying respects to Kobe, and I mean, he deserved it, he deserved everybody's respects. He's the GOAT. Um, but Christian tweeted, here we are talking about Christian Williams. Yeah, I, I, am fi- Christian, I, am fi- I can talk about Christian all day long, man. I love that Christian guy. I love him to death. T- tweeted, he said, it was like, <laughs> let me just pull it up. Okay? Please pull it have, up. If we have a second, let me just pull it up. Because I don't want to misinterpret or put any words in this young boy's mouth that no. are not there. Um, CT. There it is. Um, young Fire Dropper, CT. Wills. Young Fire Dropper. <laughs> that was a SoundCloud name back in high school. His tweet. Here it is. <laughs> so, here we go. So sad. Period. The first jersey I ever got, period. R.I.P. to a legend. I wonder if that was really the first and jersey I ever had. It was, and, and, that's when, and that's whenever I thought of the trendy bastard that you always would say, the trendy bastard. <laughs> and I was like, of course he had a fucking Kobe jersey for his first one. Okay. Of course. So... I'm going to call Christian right now. He doesn't know uh, this is going on. Get him on the horn. Get him on the horn. He's get not going to Get him right now. He's not going to answer. He better, though. We're going to ask him once and for all and see if this is true or not. I love, I love Christian to death. He's, he's one of I my, do, too. He's one of my favorite people in but this But it's life. time for him to meet his maker. Dude, well, I want to see. I just want to control, I want to see if this is for real or not. Poor guy. He's probably not going to answer because he's too bummed about the whole Kobe thing. I understand. He's you still know, at he's... home and, at, you know, just laying on his bed, wrapping himself around the pillow. All right, so he didn't answer. That's not even I'm going to call him again. <laughs> Let's get on Snap Maps and see what he's doing. He's probably at home. He is four minutes ago. He was um, active. I'll call him on Snapchat if he doesn't answer this one. But I... just, just east of Booker T. Washington High School. I think that's where he lives now, like around there. He lives really close to the airport. Come on, Christian, answer the phone. This is this is going to be a good time. Man. That poor Christian, man. He, he might Your be taking this pretty hard. All right, so now I'm going to call him on Snapchat, and if that doesn't work, <laughs> then we'll, 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 still get, we'll still get something later. Don't give up on the boy! Oh, no, I can't give up on him yet. Maybe if I just, like, keep blasting his phone, he'll, he'll answer. So... Because I feel like I've heard something else. He's telling me about all the jerseys he had growing up, and I think his, like, first one was, like, a Cubs jersey or something. I, d- I didn't know he liked Kobe. I personally never thought he liked Kobe. He was always I mean, a Bulls fan, so I... Trendy, though. You gotta think trendy, you know? Yeah. We're not trashing Christian for being trendy. It's just... No, 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 no. He's, like, he's just... He's just very trendy. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. He's, he's a very nice boy, you know? He... Oh, wait, he's calling me back right now. Here we go. Hey. Nope. What's up, man? Hey, Robert. man. Hey, dude, I got a question for you. Yeah. So what was your first NBA jersey you ever had? Kobe Bryant. Really? Was it uh, number 24 or number 8? Eight? 8. So I didn't know you liked Kobe. I did I mean, I had so many fucking jerseys of teams I didn't like. I had a fucking Miami uh, Heat Dwayne Wade jersey. I had a Yao Ming jersey. I like Yao. Yao was the Yow. shit. Yeah, dude. I, I used to be a little uh, Jersey Cook. Here, fucking... In my closet right now, I got a Joel and jersey. I got a Hakeem Olajuwon Rockets jersey. Oh, nice. No, I got a fucking Steph Curry jersey. I hate Steph Curry. <laughs> Why the fuck <laughs> you got a Steph Curry jersey? <laughs> you got a Luol Dang jersey? I never... I, uh, I never had the pleasure of running a Luol Dang jersey. Did you have a Derrick that Rose one? Nice, I uh, never got a Derrick Rose jersey. Hold on. I'm going to switch it to FaceTime real quick. 
Okay. Well, um, here, let, let me call me on the the Snapchat um, FaceTime thing here. Well, okay, so now we have uh, actual proof or from him confirming that he indeed... Visual evidence. We're about to have visual evidence. We sure am. Sure am. Hey, man, what's up? Let me see those jerseys. Come on, buddy. All right, how do I, how do I switch this? You, you just double tap it. Oh, wow, you've got the, the city jersey here. Look at this, Michael. Oh, man, now that's hot. Where'd you get that, AliExpress? <laughs> no, I got this in Vegas, actually. Wow. Yeah, I got this. <laughs> I got my Akeem Olajuwon rocket Oh, you jersey. got the, the neat one. Look at that one. Yeah, you got oh, some good jerseys. Oh, man. Now, that's a hot one. Isn't that a hot one? I can feel it through my phone. It's so hot. I'm going to explode. Got, got myself a little Embiid. Oh, fuck that guy. <laughs> that's great. I, would, I, still have my, I still have all my old jerseys at my dad's house. Nice. But obviously, I got them when I was like seven. So, so maybe if I lose some weight. Your your first your first one was a Kobe jersey then right? Where, hundred percent. Do you remember? Do you remember getting the Kobe jersey? How, how did it come about? I loved watching Kobe Bryant when I was a kid, and my dad just that was the first jersey he ever got me. My dad was in Los Angeles on business. Nice. And he just brought me back a he bought me back a uh, Kobe jersey, and he brought me oh, fuck. He I had another Lakers jersey. Uh, Fuck, I don't even remember who it was. Was it a Shaq? No, it wasn't a Shaq. I had a Shaq jersey, but it was a Heat jersey. Oh, nice. Um, fuck, I don't even remember. I'm gonna, I'll text my dad. And I'm going to have my dad send me a picture of all the old jerseys I have in my closet. Yeah, man. Please do. You, but dude, I fucking wish my Yao Ming jersey still fit. I love Yao Ming, shit. dude. I wish I had a Yao Ming jersey. Yeah, it's probably size like... 2XS. But nice. I could, I could probably make that work. Yeah, man. I Christian, I have to tell you, man, you look great right now. You, you, you're you looking, every time I see you, you look better by the fucking day. You know, that is the nicest thing anyone has ever said to me. Man. I mean it. Like, I don't know. Every, every time I ever <laughs> saw like you, like, I mean, the last time I saw you was a few months ago, but God, the last time I saw you, I was like, damn, that's a, that's a damn good looking man right there. Christian, yeah, if I could lip, have, lick lick your nipples right done. now, I would just do it. <laughs> uh, you want to see my nips? Here, present them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Present them. Whip them out. Whip them out, man. Ah, oh, there it is. Oh, there they are. Man. Oh, Looks so like it's trapped down. in a fucking rainforest. I love that. So Look at the hair. Yeah. I'd so suck on I those. <laughs> Christian, I fucking love you to death, man. We were just we were just talking about you how like to me you've always been the guy who's who's had the first of like everything I've ever heard of. Whenever I heard about a jewel, you were the first person to show exactly what a jewel was. And so, like, whenever I I found out what the fuck a soaring was, you had one. I tried. I was like, God damn, I feel like I'm soaring right now. Look at me now. I'm soaring on air. All because of you. And look, look at him. He's 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 jeweling right now. That's the next thing you're gonna to want to keep an eye out for, boys. All right, so <laughs> this is this is why this is why I need Christian because he, he's always the first look at everything, and he's the reason why I know whatever the fuck is out there. Like I, I never would have known that if it wasn't for you, Christian. Christian, yeah, who's gonna be the next hottest NBA player? You know what? I've been practicing. I got a I got a mean jumper. I've been compared to the likes of of Larry Bird and Muggsy Bogues. How's your ISO game? So, you know, we'll see, you know. That's good, man. You're working on that ISO, right? Oh, Get it on lock. ISO, baby. Every day. Every day, man. How's the fadeaway? You working on that? Oh, dude. You wouldn't even believe how fucking clean my fadeaway is. <laughs> Are yeah. you going to get a clean fade so you can have a clean fade fadeaway? Oh, damn right, dude. This, see, this is just my, my pre-NBA hair. This is my pre-NBA yeah, yeah. hair. You, you won't even want to see my post-NBA hair, man. Oh, oh I believe you, I want to see that. That one, That's something... Oh, I, I tell you, you will. You will. I'm just waiting on the call back from the Clippers. And then, uh, well... You're taking your uh, taking your talents to SoCal? I'm taking my, my talents to SoCal, baby. Christian, you know, I, I believe everything you say because once upon a time when you, me, and Michael, and Matt went to the basketball court in Foley... And when you were talking all this shit about, man, I can make any half-court shot I want to, man, I, I, you best believe it. 
first try when you fucking threw a ball from half court on that little court and Foley, you fucking drained it. And then you did it again, and then another time, and you just kept right. That's when I knew you were going to be a fucking NBA superstar. You know That's what? when I knew you had I've it. Missed. I've never missed a shot in my entire life. I'm shooting 100 for 100, 100% from the free throw line, 100% from the field goal line. I've never missed a three, never missed a half court. I'm basically the best player of all time that never got his chance to shine. Yeah, man. So, no, I, I see yeah, it. I, I know it. You know... If there's anyone who I've, I've always known to be able to shoot the shit with, it's been you. And every time you shoot the shit, you shoot for 100% every fucking time, every game. Uh-huh. Man, like, I I'm excited you what, for your future. Right in the toilet bowl every single time. I ain't never missed. Man, not even, not even with P, man. You never, you never nope. miss the bowl. Not a wasted I drop, huh? Just keep an eye out for my rookie season. I'm going to be wearing number 99 for the Los Angeles Clippers. Okay? 99. And I'm going I'm to take every damn shot. I'm, you know what? And then I'm going to die, and then everyone's going to be talking about me. Uh, you, you know, I, Kobe, Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant, he's a legend and one of the greatest of all times. May he rest in peace. May he rip. But I tell you what, when I die, everybody in the United States of America is going to be crying their eyes out. I tell you that. All the because nuns I'm, are just going to just just cry their <laughs> eyes out. I don't want to think yep. about it because I'm already getting emotional thinking about it. So I, I want to I, I want to see you in your prime before I see you in your prime rib state. Oh man, You're, you guys have no idea, man. I, I tell you, it's it's gonna be an unbelievable day. The day the Clippers call me back, I, I call them twice a day, every day, waiting for a call back. They're not giving me my chance, but I tell you what, that's the biggest mistake they've ever made. The second they sign me, they're dropping Kawhi. Okay, yeah. I'm their next guy. I believe I'm it. Next guy up. I think you need to take this to um uh, to Twitter and see if you can get get some uh, get some notice there to start blowing them up. You know, I I've, I've thought about it. Maybe uh maybe post my uh you know uh, highlights. Yeah, maybe post my highlights on the YouTube or something. See see if that can get any traction. Um, you know, we'll, we'll just see. We'll see what ends up happening. You know, if they if they pass up on me, that's their problem. That's their problem. Okay, I, you're right, you know, man. I, I, I think I, I think everyone's to lose if they don't have you. To get my attention, or to get my uh, my uh, myself known out there, and the Clippers, they aren't just they just aren't taking notice. For sure, man. Just never forget your self worth, son. Yeah, and don't forget about us. Most importantly. Hey, it's Catrick Swayze. How's how's Catrick Swayze doing? You know, he's still being a cat. What? So tell me his full name again. Oh, I mean, we've added like seven names since the last since the last time we uh, uh yeah. There it is. Oh yeah, next to the Pringles, huh? You like that? Woo! I call that, I call that the stash. I always keep I always keep some spare Pringles on me. Oh yeah, you yeah, have man. to, boys. Get old, get old pregame snack, you know. Get that get that well, pregame, pre-game Pringle snack. protein, triple peas. Yeah. Pringle Catch pregame like Pringles, protein. Too. Sometimes I'll eat Pringles. He's been known to eat a Pringle or two. <laughs> what flavor? The cheese flavor. <laughs> when it comes to the Pringles, I'm the Chris Kringle of the Pringle. <laughs> He's a pizza Pringle. Look at him. That's the face of a pizza Pringle man right there. What a beautiful fucking creature that cat is. I always loved that cat. He was one of the friendliest cats I've ever pet. I looked at him when I was petting him. I said, God damn cat, you're so fucking friendly. You have a handsome father and you need to know that. I tell you what, he is the best cat this side of Mississippi. Whenever I make my my trip to Los Angeles, become a Los Angeles flipper, he's going to be on the flight with me. He's going to be meowing his little heart out. And we're going to be shooting free throws and whatnot. And I tell you what, he's going to be on the roster too. And I tell you what, he is going to be the best Clipper of all time. Can I get an Can I get an amen? Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. Christian, while I have you, um, I used to ask you this quite, um, actually every day when we work together. But um, I need to know, what is today's word of the day? Word of the day. Well, you know, today I'm <laughs> like, what? Um, you know, People ask me all the time, what's my favorite curse word? And I like to choose the word fuck because it's the most provocative. So, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and make that. You know, I'm not making it today's best word. I'm making it this week, this whole week. So, word the of the word week. word is fuck. 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 
Well, well, fuck, man. I'm all for it. All right. Fucking A. So you heard Christian. Uh, word of the week is fuck. That is an F-U-C-K fuck. You heard it here first. Now, I also need to hear this, too. Um, tell me. It's changed quite a bit, but I need to know before we have to go here. Um, okay. What is your philosophy on life? Uh, you know, we live, we die, we uh, come back to life as a tree. And the cycle repeats itself. What what happens after the tree? What would you want to become after a tree? I'm going to say arches, uh, the McDonald's arches. That's a good one. The golden arches. Yeah. Every every time someone dies, a McDonald's gets its arches. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get an amen? Amen. Uh, amen. Amen. Christian, it is just absolutely great to see you, and I'm so happy um, to know that Kobe Bryant actually was your first jersey you had, man. Hey, I don't bullshit about that now. That's true, man. Well, thank you for verifying and uh, confirming that with us. We were we were just kind of wondering like what your actual first jersey was, and it was it was a Kobe. So, um, R.I.P. Kobe. That man always will be. Absolutely, dude. Well, hey, if you're around tomorrow, we'll call you at the same time. All right, man. We love you much. All right, bud. Take it easy, man. You too, man. Go Thank you. Bang. Go clips. Go clips. <laughs> All right. Well, we got Christian to confirm that, yes, indeed, his first jersey was a Kobe jersey. A Kobe. Man, oh, I'm so man. glad he called back. That was that made this what really special. What a good way to start this uh, first episode. Oh, wow. That's That's just poetic justice. It's true, man. And he also introduced us into the new latest vape, whatever it's called. What is it? The Jeffrey Dahmer fucking 4000? Jeffrey Dahmer 4000 <laughs> without an extra harder grip. <laughs> Fuck. You gotta have the grip, man. You can't drop that shit. Remember we were, um, remember we were driving to uh, <laughs> we were driving to Austin and um, it was like, I think we were in Louisiana we saw that plane we thought it was like a ufo it was like pitch black outside and there was like this bright light in the sky yep yep and i was like michael what is that and you're like it's jeffrey dahmer <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. oh my god call jeffrey dahmer siri call jeffrey dahmer calling jeffrey dahmer right now okay, r.i.p jeffrey dahmer burning in a uh, christian hell right now yep Burning in Christian hell with um, Richard Nixon and um, who else? Um, John Lennon. John Lennon. There's no doubt John Lennon is in hell. <laughs> For all those bad things he's done. For all those children. Same with Gandhi. Gandhi? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I don't think he's in hell. And hey, what about Gumby? Gumby is probably in heaven. He was the most innocent fuck you ever fucking knew. <laughs> What about that, when that Caillou kid or whatever his Oh, name fuck is Caillou. Right? Dude, Caillou, <laughs> if, if he's not dead by now, which I think he is, there's no doubt he's fucking burning in hell over and over multiple times. Like, I hope, I hope it's, I hope it's so consistent that that kid fucking just, I hope he disintegrates in hell and goes to another hell and fucking burns ten times harder there. <laughs> that reminds me, it's almost time. Fuck Caillou. For- <laughs> for the rant of the day. Michael, what is your rant of the day today? We're going to take turns. We're going to have one rant of the day. All right. Start I'll off. let you... you know, well, I'll go first. Let's yeah. see. I can't stand when... Let's see. I can't stand... This happened to me yesterday when old people just completely stop fucking driving oh. when they're going down the road. Mm-hmm. Everyone else, I was, the other day, I was leaving work. It was a peaceful, calm day. It was a little foggy. And I was driving, and mm-hmm. I was behind this van that had a plate from, like, Minnesota or Wisconsin or some bullshit oh, like that. Oh, they're the worst. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I was driving, and they started slowing down. And there was a little bit of traffic behind me. So I got in the other lane and fucking passed them. Well, I look at my rearview mirror, and there was a red light. And they stopped at the red light, and it was still fucking green. It was still fucking green. And everyone behind them was just about to absolutely lose their shit. And it just made me realize how much I hate elderly people driving. And I think that they should take away their license... 
immediately, effective immediately. <laughs> effective right and now, as of right now. As of right now, you <laughs> oh, heard what? it first. And, <clears throat> oh God, elderly people driving, and they, they don't know where the fuck they're going, they look at the wrong stop signs, the wrong street signs, they put everyone else's life into danger, all because they couldn't afford to miss the goddamn early bird special at the fucking Cracker Barrel, mm-hmm. so they could have gotten an extra slice of pie for 25 cents less than what it could have fucking been. I think uh, you made a really good point, but I think Cracker Barrel has a lot to uh, lot to be blamed for on this one. Yeah, if Cracker Barrel is probably the result of most car crash deaths yeah. in American history. That or any country kitchen buffet local in any... <laughs> any local or chain country <laughs> kitchen buffet. It's, 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 you know, and I, I can't sound, well, I don't know. I, I know I might come across as, you know, a dick or something when I say this, but man, it's hey, just it's okay. true. It's just true. Like old people, like, you know, I, I get that they're people too and they are, they're all old and shit and you know, whatever, but they just are because just, some, just because some piece of paper says they have rights. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But like, it's just, they are, I really firmly believe that they're true hazards to the world. Like, especially when you put them in a fucking, you know. Functioning very, society? Yeah, but when you put them in a fucking four-wheeled automobile that, you know, it, when you really think about it, you know, when you put an old person who can barely see over the steering wheel and expect them to drive down the interstate, you know, without causing any ruckus, man. Like, I don't know, you're crazy. Go a brisk 30. I was I was just fucking yesterday. I I was leaving from the CVS. That's right by um, the grocery store. You know, right where, where, where I live by the knob. Uh. And um, I was wa- I was leaving CVS, and there was this old woman in a in a van in a van. Okay, and she could barely see. I could see like I could barely see. I saw the tip of her head. She could barely see over her steering wheel. And I'm Sitting walking. Sitting on a phone book. Yeah, but I was walking, and we were kind of like keeping perfect speeds, as if we were like gonna hit each other head on. So I'm like, okay, she's gonna notice me. So I keep walking, and then she's she's not stopping. She's not stopping, and I really firmly believe that she couldn't see me. Okay, even though we were maybe seven feet apart from each other, which wasn't very far away at all. We were very close. So I just keep walking, keep gradually walking, because I had the right away. I was walking a little uh, across a little walkway, and she still wouldn't stop. So I continue to walk, and she continued to drive, and she nearly clips me. I just wanted to see how close we could get. And I'm just like, wow, like, if I wasn't paying attention, if I was walking slower, I could have been ran over by this whole woman. You or know? if you're another old person. Yeah, but yeah, if you're another old person, oh, cool, that's great, I know you, you're, yeah, I'm old too, fuck, I don't know, like, <laughs> just old people, man, like, I, I, I'm not trying to sound hateful against old people, I think, you know, we're all the same, you know, but other than just the factors that they're old and shit and I'm not, you know, but you know, it's just about having some fucking situational awareness and trying not to fucking kill people, man. Like I swear I live around so many old people out here, even in this neighborhood. And my rant of the day is that I, I recently just kind of put this out there, but old people love to complain about everything and nothing. Oh yeah. At the same time, at the same time, it's just like, I'm starting to wonder, like, you know, Becoming old just sounds so unappealing to me. I've told you this before, but like it's just mm-hmm. something I'm not interested. I don't know. We'll see. But we'll, we'll see when that when we get to it. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, we'll see when I'm pushing. You know, fucking late forties, and see if I'm really cut out for this. But uh, like, it just sounds so depressing. I know, but <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with people who are in that age realm. It's just I don't know. But like, I'm talking like old though, like sixties, seventies. It seems like you know. All those people of the age, you know, who are that age, especially the boomers, man. That's another thing. It's the usually all the boomers. Boomer. I think what's that'll the, be another day's talk. It's yeah. just a whole day dedicated to the boomers. Well, I know what we're talking about in episode two, then, so I'll save a lot of that for later. But just old people just literally have no. So I was in line um, yesterday at the CVS. Yeah, everything's tracing back to CVS here, man. Fucking it's all just everywhere. one circle. It's just it's yeah. coming full circle. It's true. So I'm just standing in line, and there is this uh, lady, older lady, checking something out, and she was using a bunch of coupons, okay? She had a shit ton of coupons, and she had all the coupons exactly for everything she bought. So she was uh-huh. pretty precise about it, like I, I'm sure old people would try to be about stuff they're buying. Because I know if something gets fucked up, I've seen firsthand, they always complain about, oh, it shouldn't be that much money. I, that's not oh what the God. label said, you know? <laughs> I speak to your manager, fucking makes everyone have to wait longer. 
But this lady was smart, and she had all the stuff. So the guy who was ringing her up was just manually, you know, going through the coupons, making sure everything was precise, you know, making getting her deals and shit. But this guy behind her is this old fuck. I'm sorry, this old guy who... No, 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 just, continue. Just fucking, like, we were in line for, I want to say, two minutes, Michael. And two minutes is not a long time. That's but about whenever you're time. waiting in line, it's about three country hours. Yeah, but when you're fucking that old and have nothing better to do than fucking make a stink about absolutely everything and nothing, you know, it's the perfect fucking thing for him to do. So this man... It was like, literally, he literally says randomly as like, um, he's like, oh, I missed the coupon. Let me scan it. The guy says, oh, for crying out loud. I'm like, dude, you gotta be kidding me. Like, you've gotta be kidding me. And he's just like, it's just taking forever. You know, and like, I was maybe in line. shit about fucking everything. Yeah, about nothing. I'm just like, man, like, do you have to go take a poop or something? Like, are, are, is something bothering you? Like, is, like, are, are, are you on some kind of like, you know, time limit here? Like, do you have to be? I don't know. But he's just was making this big deal. And so, funny enough, another person opens up the register beside us. She's like, he's like, okay, I'll take the next person in line. He's like, well, finally, shit. He says shit. I'm just like, I was like, oh my gosh, man, like, what are, what, what is wrong? So he goes to this line and talks to the person who opened up the, the register. And um, she's like, did you find everything? He's like, yeah, yeah. Man, I just didn't feel like waiting another half hour in that line over there. I'm like, oh my god, dude. Like, you weren't even in the line for, like, two fucking minutes and you're complaining about, like, you know, I was just being there, you know, I was there for a little bit, you know, just, it was a long line, there's only one line open, and this guy's just making a big fucking thing, like, oh, you're, this is ridiculous, you're ridiculous, it's ridiculous that you keep people waiting in there for so long. That's what he said, I'm like, dude, Nick, like, just shut the fuck up, you know, like, but then I just, it just makes me realize, like, everywhere I go, like, even when I go to the grocery store or whatever, anywhere, you know, like, mm-hmm. people, old people always have something to say about something, whether it's relevant or not. Well, most of it's not relevant. It's just all opinionated, like, oh, you know, like, let me state my fa- uh, opinions and make them into facts here, you know, like, oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Your skateboard's too loud, you know, I don't want to hear that. What's banned skateboards in the neighborhood? Like, dude, like. Jesus Christ. People just fucking want to, like, old people just want to fucking, like, ruin everything. Bitch about absolutely everything. Just for their own fucking satisfaction. But then I realize when they do that, whenever they do get their justice or whatever, they're still never fucking satisfied. No, no. They're about mad nothing. Cause they're, they're mad because they're like, yeah, well, it happened in the first place. Right. So I'm just pissed off all damn day. Well, let me tell you, too, how much you suck and how I got my own house at the age of 17 and had... A great job and had everything fucking spoon fed to me because my boomer ass fucking, you know, had it so good. And I'm just going to complain about the younger generation and how fucking terrible they are, how they'll never have it as good as I had it. You damn kids. Sitting on their ass all day. Just fucking doing nothing but complaining. Bullshit on the fucking phone. Yeah. Just, oh, I just. Fucking. The worst is when. I'm going to get going because. That's a whole day right there. Yeah, I cannot wait to expand on that one in the next episode. But Michael, I guess the uh, we should probably end this on some good notes. And um, I'm asking you, what is your uh, what is your opinion, word, thought, whatever? What is your uh, what is your thought of the day? Um, let's see, thought of the day. Um, I think that we're coming to a point in America where everyone should have free access to the internet. Yeah, I, I agree with you. We should we shouldn't have to access the dark web. Yes, and I feel like not saying that I have because I've never done it before. But I feel like, like everyone should also now have access to the dark web. <laughs> I think that the government needs to just chill the hell out. If we're just just let people do what they want to do, you know. Yeah, man, I I agree. I mean, we live in America, home home of the brave or whatever land of home, the free, home of the supposed free. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I thought, I thought, you know, we're, it, isn't it funny when you grow up, you know, in school, and you're, you're reading your social studies books and learning about American history, like, America was always the big fucking winner, dude, World War uh, II, back-to-back World War champions, you know, in the same fucking century. Fuck the rest. Yeah, fuck everybody, like, we, we had these really big bombs that fucking blew everyone up, and we won the fucking war because they, all the other people in this world are bad and shit, like... You and know. we are superior. Yeah, the fucking America was always number one growing up, dude. You know what was the craziest thing was when you and I in fourth grade at intermediate school, 
we had the Pledge of Allegiance, then the National Anthem, and, uh-huh. then, and then America the Beautiful. And we stood there for like 15 minutes, like soaking this in. Praising America. You remember that, right? Every day in the gym. That was the fucking worst. It was so good. It was so funny. I'm just like, man, like, and like, it's just funny because then like my, my history books going out there is like, oh, America was this. America defeated this country in this war. America saw world peace and all this shit. You know, it's like no one ever fucking talks about like, you know, how like the actual history, like I learned about it's like the supposed history of this country, but no one ever talks about the dark, the gray areas and shit, and like how bad the it discovery things. of the dark web. Yeah, like exactly when America, <laughs> when America back in eighteen oh four discovered the dark web, you know. But like how and, this like and Aunt but, Sue was purchasing human organs. Yeah, for her fucking leisure. <laughs> leisure. I don't know, but like you know, it's just it's just crazy, but like you know. America, I, I really believe, is a great country. You know, there's unlimited potential to do a lot of things. But, man, do they just make it so difficult for us to really live out the quote America. Okay, so my, my, my thought of the day is the American dream. People think about the American dream being this thing like, oh, I need to have a, a, a nice, a nice job. Yeah, a, picket, a white picket fence, you know, uh, a nice two-story house or whatever. Um a family, you a know, wife and two kids. A happy family. I have, uh, you know, have my kids live a, a very traumatic free life and eat all the ice cream they want and send them to uh, BYU for college and have them have a successful life. Stay all virgins shit. until they're married. Right, dude. And I think the American dream is all fucking wrong. I think the American dream should be what you make the American dream to be. I, I think it's all about how you are able to live your life as an American. Whether mm-hmm. you want to fucking take a different route and say, I don't want to go to college, I want to do this. Fucking, I think it should be all about having the ability of an American, of being an American to do whatever the fuck you want to do. Not have Absolutely. To, you know, it's one thing to be told, like, when you're a young kid, like, oh, America, blah, blah, we're winners, and how you can grow up to be one big-ass fucking winner and, and do one this. One big piece of greasy shit yeah, just dude. like the rest of us. And how relevant is that now today with Donald Trump being a fucking president? Like, oh, we're America. All we want to do is win and we're going to keep we're winning. We're going to win the war and, and we're going to give just, everyone guns. It's so fucking, then... like, unhealthy, you know, to tell kids about, like, oh, you, this is this is, this is is the American life. But no one ever fucking tells you about the gutters or the suicides and the the the... What the the real fucking real life deals, you know, that we all go through and face. No one ever mm-hmm. tells you about that, you know? And there's so many different things I wish that, you know, the education system could have fucking I mean, I feel I still to this day feel pretty failed through all the school that I fucking went through my whole life. Oh, yeah. You know? Just one big failure, but like, you know, I learned so much from things over time, like you know, I I I, I think about school and high school like i wish like high school would have taught us like how the fucking real life works how real real world you know goes and like how to fucking like do useful things in your life and fucking learn about balance a checkbook american propaganda or shit like that yeah exactly like shit that doesn't fucking matter like i'm so glad i fucking learned how to do find the area of a fucking triangle and you know how useful that's been to me in my whole life. Maybe it will come in handy at some point. Maybe I don't know. Never I wrote a goddamn yet. check or measured a triangle in my Nothing, life. Dude. I remember, like in third grade, my class was like like one of the last classes to learn how to um, properly um, address an envelope and like uh, mail. Like that was fucking useful as shit. I was like, this is cool. And also writing cursive. Apparently, they don't teach like cursive in school anymore. Mm-hmm. God, I'm sounding like an old person right now. I complain like, oh, back in my day, I learned this and this and this. <laughs> Meanwhile, fucking babies We're here are... to walk a country mile! Exactly, but meanwhile, babies are being popped out of their mothers and, like, given a smartphone instantly now, and, like, oh, here, fucking, you know, play these apps and shit and expect to learn something instead of doing something hands-on. Mm-hmm. It's crazy, man. I don't know, I feel like I'm going to... I think, I think the rant uh, part of our podcast could literally go on forever. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save some things for episode two, because I feel like I really... Got out of hand really quickly. It made it made it sound a little, little arrogant about some things, but I don't give a shit. I don't fucking I hope either. I offend everyone. <laughs> we mean that in a good way because we're we're just we're just observers to you know society and how the fucking world is and like observers with an opinion like everyone else. I guess my closing note is when once you learn 
that everything is like, I don't know. Once you learn not to care as much, uh-huh. I think life seems a little more, uh, a, little, a little easier than oh, yeah. things I guess were and what we were told to believe growing up and stuff. And I don't know, man, yeah. you got to give yourself that freedom. You have to really fucking do things for yourself in this life. And, you know, fuck what everyone else is doing. If they're, whatever they have going for them is good. That's great. That's not you, you know? Maybe you want to get to the same levels. Who knows? Who knows what anyone wants, dude? Like, I don't think anyone really knows what they want. But if they do, fucking great. But, like, you know, just never forget about yourself. It should always be about you and not no one else. Absolutely. Yeah, man. That's all I got to say until until episode two. That's all for now, folks. That is all for now. Michael, I think that was a Peace good out. I think it was Shot good. Home. <laughs> and everything else. <laughs> I think it was a good first episode. I'm looking forward to talking with you some more because I think, Absolutely. Uh, I think this is at the start of something really good. Mm-hmm. All right, Michael, it's been real. We'll do it again probably in the next day or so. It sounds good to me. All right. Thank you for whoever's listening. This is, this has been fun and it's, it's going to keep happening. <laughs> All right. I'll talk to you later. See you later, Michael. Bye.